Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on the 29th of January, wrapping up the month. And you can see what a month it's been. Look at this leg, seeing the monthly chart of the Dow, all time high. Uh, just missing it by a fraction today. So far, the high is 38,163. The high on Friday was 38,215. I believe, yep, 38,215. Let me just type that in here 38,215. I've written it all over the show except on this particular chart. And I do have an alternate count here. So the reason why we have alternate counts <clears throat> is the threefold. One is in the Chapman Wave methodology, there's absolute clarity. And then there's this aspect where you've achieved your goal, which is to get to the fourth highest peak, and that's where other things can happen. What I've found over the years, I should even say perhaps decades, is that when I get an, when I see an instant restart, it is at the fourth highest peak, leg D goes through peak D, and within three bars it makes an E. And then it has what I call an instant restart by continuing higher so that you can have an alternate count. What it's really saying to you is that the strength in this particular vehicle that you're monitoring is so strong that when it has the next pullback, and you do, you do have it occasionally, but not that often where you get two consecutive instant restarts, that's fantastic if you can get it. But most importantly, um, what is happening is that at that D, that's where you can get some kind of a consolidation. In that consolidation, you've got to monitor a couple of things. And one of the things that I look at that's really important <clears throat> is the nine period moving average. I call it the indicator of last resort. Why, look, the MACD's failed, although at this very moment it's very close to trying to turn positive. Stochastic is at 86%, I wouldn't call that a failure, that's very good. Um, the on-balance volume is pretty good, but you don't have all the, all the technical indicators in sync. So as a result, what I'm looking at here is that there's still internal strength. Now, put it together with all those round numbers that I saw, well, I don't want to go through them again today, but uh, it, it was really quite incredible. I mean, even Johnson and Johnson, J and J, uh, J and J, which is actually part of the Dow, had 162 when it made its most recent multi-month high, almost a yearly high, and had 162. It went to 163, but I'm monitoring that because that turns into a a benchmark that you can look at because it was so straight above 162. That's going to be very important. And why do I mention that? Because I, I don't really want to give this example, but I do because we're talking about technical analysis. But in a particular stock, uh, something like a, um, a, um, DraftKings had a round number 40 four sessions ago, and then it pulled back. It held the support level, and then today it popped up, and it went to 40.19. So that's also Lake C, and that just says that 40 is going to become – become important, but later on. Now it's it, it, it's usurped that moment that says, uh-oh, if it pulls back even sharper from here, that 40 is going to be major resistance. Now it's almost like another magnet. So the way you read round, the way I read round numbers going back decades, I mean, going back to before the 1987 crash with an 87 crash low, the day of the low, October the 19th, I saw so many round numbers, every single Dow stock. I mean, the people were so afraid. It opened at a round number, and then they would drop 20, 30, sometimes even more, 40%, have a round number at the bottom and then close just above the round number or at the round number. And the next, it was up and away after that. So I look at this a little differently when I'm seeing it at bottoms as to when I'm seeing it at tops. But And remember, tops... They're rotational. Bottoms are synchronous. So in this particular instance, let's go back to what we were looking at. I'll just do it again. So the Dow is uh, up 50. Not a bad, not not bad. Uh, 38.161. We've taken some insurance. Now we're looking at the S&P right here. S&P, not bad. Uh, not actually the Dow is up 0.15%. The S&P is up 0.13%. So up six at 48.96, still very good action. It's now above the green, 
Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Line. So this is going to be much, much more important to monitor at this particular point for um, internal strength. The um, Qs are not quite as strong. They are at 0.17%, up 73% at 424.53, but the chart formation says three days of after the all-time high. Oh, I forgot to type that in. I think it was just, oh, 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 let's get there, 400 and 29.85, missed the round number. 429, I'll just type it in. It'll be in dark, but I just, 429.25, yeah. Okay, so... Um, Still very good, but those weekly charts, all the weekly charts are still very strong. This is in leg C in the weekly chart. This is the QQ. Leg B in the monthly, that's amazing. That just says 2020 is going to be a good year, even if we do have some sudden, very sharp pullback based on, I think that it's going to be more geopolitical rather than just purely economic. Yeah, anyway, let's get to that when the time comes. IWM. Uh, up 25 cents at 196.25, not doing all that well. I uh, did not just do that, or did I do it during the uh, update? This is a high grade copper, high grade copper, not not bad. Coming back after uh, two days of pullback, there was a really nice rally from the 3.70s up to the 3.80s, almost touched 3.90. So this is going to be very important because I want to see high grade copper start to trade in February. About 3.95, preferably into the uh, into the force. That'll be absolutely fabulous action. Hasn't done it yet. Let's just go to um, the bonds. Uh, bonds right now are up 22, 30 seconds. You can see there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the daily chart. Weekly chart, the 9 is still over the 14. Let's go to the TLT because most people look at the TLT rather than just bonds. TLT is very weak. That's the same chart. Had a peak G at 100.57. Uh, the 28th of December is pulled back from 100 uh, to 94.34. I mean, these are bonds, so that's a big move, six points, uh, you know, six percent. What we're looking at really is uh, within the context of this peak A in the weekly chart, the little doji candle at the high, two doji candles. Um, you want to see bonds start to move into the 97.80, 98.20 area in the next week to say, hey, Forget about yields. They, they're out the way. You don't have to consider them as an issue. But at this point, you've got to still consider that yields are pretty high. So I want you to get to this, and then we can go to all the other things. GDX. GDX had a really nice bounce to the 14-period moving average, that black line right there, 28.41. It went to 28.40. Now it's pulled back. It's up. Uh, it's down 10 cents at 27.96. You can see the second arch formation right here in the weekly chart sharply under the 200 period moving average the nine period is under the 14 this is kind of weak action it hasn't broken down yet but it's weak action let's just go to silver si uh, silver continuous contract not not as actually it looks a little better than gold but it doesn't look great and it's trading at 22.96 down 0.08 if it can actually trade between 23 23.50 and 23.82 in the next week and then start to hold on a weekly basis. Even one close above 24 will say, hey, slight change of pattern, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, I did the, uh, did the high-grade carpet with that. Just quickly, crude oil, very sharp move down. 76.61 down $1.40. I'll be right back. We've got a bunch of questions in the den, and let's we'll just check in the uh, YouTube. Yep, I'll be back. Dow's up 51. S&P's up 5. We'll see. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, Basil Chapman, Dow is up uh, 45, S&P is up 6, and we're looking at Amazon. So Amazon, uh, Amazon comes out with earnings, I think on Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, on Thursday. So uh, it's trading very well right now. It's uh, up uh, 59 sets, 159.70. All-time high, don't forget, was 188 back in the uh, when I, I have to say the, the decimals uh, So it's because I was talking about round numbers. In this case, 188.65 uh, July 2021. Had a little plummet, 100 points down um, to 81.43. I think it was uh, – that was uh, – December or January, December 22 or January uh, 23. And then it's had a fabulous move from that all the way up. It's up at uh, 159 right now. Leg C in the weekly, uh, sorry, leg C in the monthly, leg D in the weekly, and a peak E. And it did this 158.51 times two. It did it twice. And that to me is always just a clue to say, okay, keep keep monitoring this. It's not a round number, but it's just something to monitor. Because if it starts to trade under that by about two points to the 156 level, all of a sudden that whole 158.51 uh, area becomes very strong resistance. Oh, sure, normally it would. All right, so as it stands right now, nothing to see here other than the nine-period exponential moving average is saying, be prepared in the next couple of days, there could be a pullback. I wouldn't even say a couple of days. In the next, in the shorter term, there should be some kind of a pullback. You saw what happened right here. Look, there's on balance volume on the uh, 18th of December when the price was at 154. It actually had another two days. It went all the way to uh, 152 point, uh, no, 155.63. And then it pulled back, and then it pulled back quite sharply. So you, this is, to me, just a heads up to say, hey, be a little careful. I'm just starting to get signs that say that there's a there's somewhat of an overbought situation in many of these key stocks, especially the 
um, Magnificent Seven, and that's kind of a benchmark. It's just, I, I, I'll get back to SMH in a moment. But one, I'm thinking of to Amazon in a moment. Let me just look at SMHs. 188.61, and uh, down, up 35 cents, made an all-time high on Thursday, just over 195. It was one, uh, one, 195.90. Let me just change that over there. 195.90. 95.90. There it is. And we were down just a little bit. Yes, yeah, seven points or so. You had 183. Oh, 12 points. No, it's 188. Sorry, 188. And um, look at that tiny doji candle. Or so I should call it tiny open and close on the last week. But a long-legged candle closing towards the lower end. <clears throat> and it's to be monitored because at any point this week, if it starts straight above 192, I'm going to make it 192.10. So that could be the big pop on Thursday when it gets all that news and Friday could do that. And holds there for over 90 minutes. Whatever the high is this week, it should it should test that high. I'm watching this very closely, but it's only like seeing the monthly. But on the short term... I'm just monitoring why, because it's it's really Amazon. I to me, Amazon is really one of the very important stocks in the whole panoply of uh, economic uh, in the spectrum of looking at what the what the public does, what the company does, and how the market reacts to any news. I think it's really important. So that's Amazon. So all I'm going to say is. That at this particular point, I see upside resistance. I see that whole area between 192. I'd even go to 198. I'm not sure I can go to 200 yet, but up to 198, I think is going to be very strong resistance. So we're going to be monitoring uh, Amazon, not for this week, but for next week. How does it act and react next week to both earnings or whatever it is? And as I said, I'm I'm we've taken an insurance policy on the market right now. One of the one of the sectors. Uh, I think it's important to monitor everything now with such a spectacular move from the October low through to November, right through December, coming into January. It's just time for a breather, and we'll see when it occurs. 50, FFTY, that is the Investor's Business Day, the innovative IBD 50 ETF. Once was up in the, in the 50s, plummeted down to the uh, low 20s, now trading at 25.25. So, I wouldn't be surprised if there's one little pop over the next couple of days, and that means that one of the earnings in some somewhere, I mean, you've got so many fantastic stocks certainly coming up tomorrow. Today, new core, we'll look at that, and Cleveland Cliffs coming up, I'll look at that. In a moment, I was asked if I could look at that, I will. But just for the moment, I want to say 23.35, starts leg D. And I wouldn't be surprised very soon after that, there's some kind of a pullback in the Nifty 50. Now, do you see this monthly chart? Look at ARKK. This is uh, Kathy Wood. It's her innovative. It's a, it's a little different. Hers is making higher highs and higher lows. And the Nifty 50 uh, is not. I don't think she has 50 stocks. I don't know how many she has. But she certainly has everything that comes down, including Tesla buying, what was it, almost 350,000 Tesla on uh, over last week, and here it is at 184.76, had a, one, a round number 193. I said, what's that one, round number 193? If it starts to trade above it, it could maybe even go to the 200 level, the pink nine period moving out. Wow, if it starts to trade for two out of three sessions below one, oh, uh, below, yeah, 180.06. Um, two sessions, that just says, oh, man, even the weekly is going to make another, yet another. Let me just do this for you right here. So I'm coming back in a moment to the question of the Nifty 50. Well, that's not the Nifty 50. That's the investor's business day. Remember, they use all the can slam techniques, etc. So there we are. This is, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, right there, 179. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The 180. What, just over 180 was the low in Tesla. Here's your third one to one to the downside. There's a Chapman Wave falling exclamation. I don't want to draw it in right now, which turned to a dreaded H. And uh, yeah, watch that very closely. So let's go back to the question, which was uh, 50, which is innovative IBD, 50 ETF, F, 
F T Y is the symbol. Twenty five twenty five is the price right now. Up twenty. Oh, I should say it's up twenty five cents, but it's not it's up twenty three cents. What a pity. Who would have been twenty five twenty five up twenty five? Um, anyway, that's what I'm telling you. That I think it's going to go there. And then what would I expect? I wouldn't be surprised if the pullback really carries you into the. Could it go to 2380s where the 200 period moving average is? I think, first of all, above that is really key. So 2430, a, a point lower, if that ta is taken out, it's speed that I'm talking about. If it's taken out in the next three days, that's really not good. And if it's taken out without making that peak D, which is an alternate count right now, um, I, no, it's, I'm sorry, it's not an alternate count. It's a peak C. It needs to go to, I think it will touch that or double top. I could call it a C1, C2 if it goes just a little higher than 25.29. The high was 25.34. That was on the 24th. Uh, yeah, anywhere into the 20, 25. And then I can say, and then fail, then I'll call it a C1, C2. So it's very close, very close right now. It's not showing the kind of energy that um, in the technicals that I would like to see, uh, but it's held very nicely. I'll be back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All 
Hi folks, we're back and we're looking at Snow, which is Snowflake Inc. Global Data Platform, 429 round number high back in, soon after its IPO back in December of 2020, 110, I'd say a 400% almost, a 398, whatever it is, percent decline is a problem. 110.27 in June 2022, and now it's in a leg, seeing the monthly chart, this almost looks like ARC in a way, the monthly chart, but not the daily or the weekly. That's a little bit more improved. So this is a peak C in the a leg C in the weekly chart. Now the quick big question is that um, oh I never finished my uh, what was I looking at that had that instant restart, and then I never finished my sentence. And what I wanted to say is when there's an instant restart. And you look back, this almost is an instant restart. It just missed it by a couple of pennies, but I'll, I'll treat it as if it was, just to show you something. So in this particular instance, when there's an instant restart, and let's just go back to back where it was in the 160s, and that was in November, but then it breaks out very sharply, and it did have an alternate count uh, for a moment right there so within three bars it didn't take out the uh, peak d so i'm still circling i'm treating it as if it was just to demonstrate something 169.19 169.82 uh, say so it was a little bit lower but what happens is that instant restart down there is so powerful that the price if it goes sideways it tends to have spikes to the upside for a little while and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Even today, it's up to 213 at 204.64. Now, normally what I would do is I'd say, if that was the E, then this would be a brand new peak A and a peak B. But here's your starting point, right? So that means I still have to consider that there could be an, uh, an overlapping wave. I'm sorry. Let's just put that in there. A, right, you got it. So I need, just for the moment, to say F, slash B as if it's a continuation pattern and one of that is one of the reasons is this instant restart in this case it just misses but technically it, it has a lot of almost all the characteristics except by four cent, uh, 40 cents or something it didn't make a higher high the power of the move even when you get the MACD sharply you know, low, the stochastic sharply you know, the on balance volume health and the nine period held beautifully. Then it went for uh, a day, it went pink, and then green. And then for two days, it went pink, and now it's green. And that just says to me, it's starting to get kind of choppy here. And that choppiness says that I do have to have an alternate count. If I, if I, if you're long and you're long from underneath this whole congestion area, that I call it the cup formation right here, right here, that cup formation. Um, I would just be looking at this and saying. If you haven't already taken a little bit money off, just in terms of money management, take a little bit off. But if your long position, I would just hold it. This is still acting superbly. If it starts to fill the gap, that's still a sideways move in congestion phase. It's a, in a leg C in the monthly chart. Um, this becomes there, down arrow. Haven't updated it. This becomes an up arrow. This is in a buy mode. So that's the most important. So I would take a little bit off at 204. And I prepared to put that back at about uh, one ninety-seven ish, somewhere there. Let's just give me a yell, and we'll do this together uh, when when you want to. But in the meantime, if you're long, I'd be holding the long, just in terms of money management. If you haven't taken something off, that's what I would do. take a little bit off. But I plan to put that same money back into the stock because this is a big turnaround. Um, the stochastic in the monthly chart is only at 72. I wish it would be at 80. Then I'd say, yeah, I, I really haven't got a, a full confirmation yet. I have to wait for the month to finish. This is the first time that the monthly has gone green, but it's still a couple of days to go before the month ends. Um, and so that all I can say is, and that'll be the first time it's ever gone green in the monthly chart in the, in the 914. So this is wait a little bit. I think it's still acting quite well. All right, with that said, uh, another question came on oh, Palantir. A few people asked me over the weekend, and then again here in the den. Palantir uh, Technologies trading at 16.84, up 50 cents. It did a very quick peak A, peak B, peak C, and then it gapped up to a D with its candle, like a butterfly candle. And I just said, I'd be a little careful with this, and it is pulling back. 
but now it's in a containment area, and that containment area better hold at 1685. It better hold 15, 15, no, I'm going to give it 1610. If it closes under 1610, watch out. Not only could take out the left side low of about the 8th of uh, December, uh, 8th of January, I'm sorry, but it could actually go to the 15.46 200 period exponential moving average. It needs very quickly. This one needs speed right now to get back uh, above that gap area, even though it's already filled it on the downside. It needs to get to 17.37, up about 50 cents or so, just to say, hey, I have room to the upside. But that weekly chart, I haven't put a down arrow yet. I have to wait for the week to end. But uh, I'm real close to putting in a down arrow, a sell mode in the weekly of Palantir. The question came in. Let me just see where it is. There, over there, over there. Oops, it's over here. Um, could I look at... Oh, right, FXI. We've got our, our foreign look at the markets. FXI had a very nice bounce, giving back some today, and that is the iShares China Large Cap ETF, 22.24, down 36 cents. Made a peak A last week after really a horror. I have to see where this Fibonacci comes from. Whoa, am I going to squeeze it and squeeze it to see where the Fibonacci comes from? I am. Am I squeezing the right? No, I went from squeeze to stretch. Oh, my. Oh, it goes all the way. It goes all the way back to right there, the high of June the 28th of 2022. I, I drew in this um, Fibonacci, and it hit most of the numbers, funnily enough, and then it went right down to the low. What was the low right here? The low was the two, the sum, the 20.95 and 20.81. So 20.81, where the arrow up is, um, there were two buy modes, peak F, pulls back, goes to peak F, and that was it at uh, around about, 33, 38 or so, something in the 33, 30s, pulls back. And now what is it just recently retested to the lower, did I say, was uh, 20 in the 20 area. And the most recent low was 21.20, 21.20, yeah, 21.21. So it's trying to get off the ground. Look at the way the stochastic has moved up so high, and yet the price really hasn't done all that much when you think about it. Um, so let's see, what would I do though? FXI, would I be buying this right now? I, I can't, I don't, I don't have any sign that says to me buy it at this particular. I'd rather be buying higher highs, I'd rather buy it one penny above uh, 22, uh, 23 .11. I would then nibble on a long position, and that's the only way I would play it. And even then, I'd have a very tight stop. I, I don't like this. I think, I think this, this the China stocks and China ETF, this um, FXI, is really, it's 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 a problem right now. Yeah, it's up six. S and P's up one. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, I get your questions on it. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yeah, so I need you to just hear this for a moment. Uh, yeah, very nice. Okay. So, oh, is it 15? Oh, I wonder if I just missed it. Okay, so what we're looking at right now is PayPal. So I want you to just go to the, um, for the moment, I just want to go back to uh, K and G. Yes, okay. So this is the way I think, I, this might be just a lesson. It's something that I've been working on for a little while because I like to change my modus operandi to the conditions that are extant right now. And what I'd said for for uh, DraftKings was that we've got a position <clears throat> um, and what we want to do is with that $40 round number, I said if it hits 40.15, we've got to take a little bit off. So. Yeah, you're looking at a chart, you think, oh, that's fantastic. And then you know what happens? The, the chart turns back and looks at you and says, ha, watch this, mister. And look what it did. It was looking fantastic. It was up at the 4019 level. And that's what I'm looking. The reason why I did that is because I'm looking at so many stocks that are doing the same sort of thing. They give you an opportunity, and that's why I said just a moment ago to the question about snow, I said, you know, take, take a little bit off, um, because you have to do money management in this market. It is. It was a straight-up market. Now it's sideways. My thinking is in February it's going to be, for a little while, it's going to be lower highs and lower lows just for a little while as we consolidate, and that's the reason why I think it's really important. Now I'm going to go back to PayPal. And PayPal should be in the in the sweet spot in the sense that, um, and this is really a, a stock that electronic payments and all that. A lot of people that are uh, that have this must be very much beholden to them because they, they uh, you know, you set it up. You don't want to be changing it. This is not something that you say, oh, well, we'll try it for six months and then we'll move. You've got you know what, maybe hundreds, sometimes thousands, maybe tens of hundreds of thousands of people on the. So look what happens. It's trading up at 300 and it looks fantastic back in 2021. Oh, it has a little bit of a pullback and it goes to 50. And now it's trading at 62.49, a very nice percentage up from the low, but horrible. And I'm saying to myself, 
something's going on with a lot of these uh, payment uh, companies if they're having this kind of a pull, but maybe it's competition. I don't know what it is. But looking at the chart, the severity of this pullback in this leg C is fine because you're looking at the nine period moving average still positive even though it had a really sharp pullback. If you look at the daily chart with the 200 period moving average, I've learned over at least, I'd say for maybe four to six months, this pattern's appeared very often. It's a big spike up, and it's usually from lows, a big spike up, and you come back, and then you hold very nicely, and then you start to move up. And then instead of this being, in this case, an F, it sometimes turns out, actually, this goes back not just recently. I've done the, this is for maybe 40 years. It's a pattern I've looked at. And I, I don't really know how to pinpoint it to the extent that for a um, to, to systemize it, to put it into a computer program, uh, it's just a kind of complicated. I do it visually. And this just says to me, this is one where putting in an F slash A is very good because if the price holds and the stochastic starts to improve, and the MACD starts to improve, you can get a brand new, like an A, and then underneath it, it's almost like the rectangle formation. This could become an A, then a B, and a C, and a D. And if it starts to close over the 200 period moving average, this can go to a leg D over a couple of weeks, maybe a month. It can finally go to a peak D at 68. Well, let me just see if that's right. Yeah, 68.22. If it's this this week, that's fantastic. But my thinking is, it's more later on. Is it got earning? Uh, the earnings not this week anyway. So that's what I'm looking at now. Because of this Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down pattern, I also have to add that if it closes underneath last week's low of 60, no 59, I think 59, yeah 58.90. If it closes under the be prepared that this low can be tested. So this is a very important moment. Uh, it's a pattern that usually happens off a low. Going to a high, you have to look at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture says there's a pattern with this particular stock. Look at these big, red, ugly candles. This is almost like a biotech. It just it has these something comes out of the blue. Whoosh, the thing drops. In this case, 75s. To the to under 60, and then another time it goes from the 75s to uh, 62. So you've got to be really careful with this stock. So I, I would just say that if you were in it, if it was me, I would have a very tight stop on this stock. But I am saying the pattern says another move to the upside today. It's up 67 cents at 62.45. PY PL is the symbol. It needs to get very quickly to the 64.70. 200 period exponential moving average. Whew, that was a lot of talking for just to tell you to do that. Uh, next question came in. I'm looking here. Um, uh, okay, so I want you to do this XLF. I was asked over the weekend if I would get it just to have a chance to look at the financials. So look, the XLF down eight cents right now. And this is 38.58. The S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. Well, have a look at this. Um, yeah, yes, yeah, another instance where I'm giving it an alternate count, but the tactics are actually darn good. 93% in the stochastic daily. Magnes positive, nines over the 14. On balance volume is a little bit overbought. And look at that weekly chart in leg F in the weekly chart. So I don't see anything wrong in this. And what I, why I wanted to mention that is uh, just – for the moment, I'm going to give you Kre as a KRE as well. This is the regional S&P regional banking index. Yeah, it's doing okay. It's not as good as the XLF. So the money center banks are doing much better than the regionals. I want the regionals at 60, at 52.64 in February. I don't care which week it is. Some week in February, I want to see a trading in the 56 to 57 area. And the 200 period moving average is at 53. It made a peak E. Um, and I'll, this is this is with a, an overlapping wave. So it's, the C says it should go to a D. This particular C should go to a D in the weekly chart. But the daily chart is just stalling. So what I was going to say is that within the XLF, I wanted to just talk about a particular pattern. And that pattern said, it's a slow run from the 4170 January 22 high 
at peak E with a two-bar candle reversal to the 29.59. Now, this as an ETF, that the year and a half, two-year consolidation that we've had is almost, it's exactly two years now. It's in January, right? Um, this is really very good action. When 17.49 was the March low and 41.70 was the high, to have pulled back to the, say, $30 level, uh, 10, that's call it about 18%, 20%. That's one of the better ETFs. So I like the fact, and it's really important to me, that the XLF is rallying, and it says the way it's rallying says that the key support level is at 38.57 will be uh, 36.80. The sauce trade under 3650 in February. It says we're having a digestive phase. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 22. SP's down. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. 
for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So, tell this very briefly. So, in the Tiger YouTube, Jeff says that the PE of China, uh, 8, P, 8 PE, is just like a. Uh, in many countries around the world, you just won't find that kind of PE. Yeah, but you know, PEs can stay low for quite a while. Uh, that's just the way PEs work. But I am thinking, that's what I was saying that uh, last week, I think, that I'm looking at China only when we start the next big phase to the upside. As I'm looking at it, will China start to, to repair the damage? So that could be just a little while longer. You have to wait. Maybe I'm wrong. The other thing was lucid. Uh, just be real careful. I mean, that's not a chart that even there's a pop today. It could be anything. Uh, it looks like a biotech here. Anyway, not the recent biotechs have been great. All right, let me just do this real quickly. As far as I'm concerned, there's topping action going on right now. That doesn't mean to say that there's enough internal strength. They can't make slightly higher highs. I think maybe just slightly higher. But I would not be su surprised if as we're going into the end of this week, the beginning of next week, um, we can see some kind of consolidation beginning. And I'm starting to see that. And those round numbers, I can't dismiss them. They don't just happen from nothing.